his big old dick and one of his balls fell out of his britches. Yeah, my son goes, Daddy, Mr. Sugar got a big old pee-pee. No, son, you and I got pee-pees, that's a dick. story with the show. Really simple. It's just a bunch of funny people. We're all telling true stories. One of the nicest guys in America, Mr. Ralphie May, everybody. Let him hear it. My neighbor, Gay Tony, got married. I love him. That ain't his real name, of course. It's just how it appears on my cell phone. And, uh, so to my little kids, now it's Uncle Tony and Aunt Tim. You know, they're awesome. They're just the best, dudes. <laughs> Their wedding is why you should always go if invited to a gay wedding. It is fabulous. <laughs> I was amazed at how gay it really was. <laughs> like, I thought it'd be gay, but not gay gay, but it was way gay. <laughs> they had like Cirque de So gay and guys flying down and making out with dudes and tweaking nipples and flying back up, <laughs> crazy. My daughter was in the, the wedding, was, you know, a procession. My wife was handling her, and I was sitting with my son, August, who was four at the time. And uh, you know how at weddings, how they have uh, entertainment usually? You know, before the actual ceremony, they have like, uh, like the fat girl cousin of the bride will come out and sing that horrible song from Frozen, you know? <laughs> You know, and uh, and then but like started off with like a five minute long rambling story about how she went out one time with y'all bowling and then y'all had pizza and y'all shared the last piece of pizza and that's what true love really is and and you're just like let's go big girl let's go wrap it up biggie let's go that open bar ain't gonna drink itself baby let's do this and. Uh, <laughs> Either that or it's like, um, like a retarded, might be retarded kid playing the trumpet with a boner, you know what I mean, you know? <laughs> You're like, that Timmy loves his trumpet, don't he? Look at that. <laughs> Woo, that boy is musically inclined, Lord Jesus. <laughs> oh, that's a hog, that boy. <laughs> anyway, they didn't have that, okay? They had a six foot four black male transvestite share impersonator named Sugar <laughs> with a CH. Hey. <laughs> Mr. Sugar was six foot four, okay? That's, that's, that's quite a striking share, okay? But we, he, my man had eight inch platform boots on with fishnet stockings, got about a bustier and a cape. Because for a black man looking just like Cher, wouldn't quite get enough. My man added the cape. Nice. My son had a lot of questions. <laughs> Daddy, what is that? That son is a transvestite. Woo! That's a big old trans mess, my daddy. Yeah, yeah, son, that's about as big as I reckon they come. Yeah, that's a big one. Biggest one I ever seen, Dad. Biggest one. Transmess might just big, Dad. Yeah, how you been to that? And uh, uh, he saw that Sugar was wearing that cape and he was like, Daddy, you think Mr. Sugar likes sword fighting? <laughs> I bet, I bet he does. <laughs> what was funny is all the gay guys around us were like, we like sword fighting too. You know what I'm <laughs> My son was like, man, these are a bunch of cool dudes right here, man. I like these guys. So, 
Sugar started singing, right? And my man was killing it. I'm not even gonna lie. I don't, I don't know the words. She just <laughs> sounds like a blue tick hound dog to me. So he sounded like one, so I'm like, he must be on. And uh, halfway through his performance, his big old dick and one of his balls fell out of his britches. <laughs> yeah. My son goes, Daddy, Mr. Sugar got a big old pee-pee. <laughs> no, son, you and I got pee-pees. That's a dick. It's big. Had an elbow in it, Lord Jesus. Big. Now, and that's when August goes, yep, transmesmites got sticks, Dad. <laughs> that's a life lesson, son. You listen to that. You hold that with you. That could save your life one day, son. <laughs> Transmesmites got sticks. <laughs> Amen, son. Amen. What I was amazed is how professional Mr. Sugar was. Okay, that thing falls out. My man is obviously panicked, turns, gets his pocketbook, rips off some tape, puts his junk back up in his britches, and finishes the song. I was like, genius! That was impressive. That was impressive. Think about that. Ladies, halfway through one of your performances, one of your janitor lips falls out. You're not going to be so composed. You're not going to tuck it back in. You're not going to go, don't judge. I've made a lot of bad choices in college. You know? Once that's out, the show is over, right? <laughs> Not sugar. Went on and did it, nailed it. The ceremony went off without a hitch. The reception, though, that was awesome. Those gay boys went all out. 100 cases of French champagne, prime rib station, seafood station, just grab a lobster. What? Okay. <laughs> Real sushi bar with bona fide Japanesey Japaneses. <laughs> Real. Real. Not like you get in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, it's some white guy squinting, you know? <laughs> this is real. Real. I almost got teabagged on the way back to our table. They had these risers on each corner of the dance floor, and up there was basically a naked man. Okay, I mean, he was wearing the G-string, but a tiny one. Okay, and he was way bigger than that. Okay, my man, Puerto Rican G-string, according to the flag on it. And my man was just shaking it. Just... I'm talking to my wife. As we're walking, a, stay, a light hits a sequence, goes into my periphery, and I go, whoa, nuts. I matrix nuts. Quite possibly the most athletic move I've made in the last 30 years. Not gonna lie to you, it was pretty impressive. Cause that's not my luck. My luck is to have the full tea bag and me go, sorry, will you get it off my face, please? He's Puerto Rican, I smell plantains. Okay, you know, that's my luck. We get to the table and right by our name are three pills. And my wife goes, is that candy? And I'm like, honey, I'm pretty sure I know every candy ever made. <laughs> I don't know what those first two are, but that last one looks like pharmaceutical grade MDMA from the early 90s. <laughs> and my wife goes, what's MDMA? And I go, that's ecstasy. And she goes, <laughs> yeah, you remember that, don't you? Yeah. A different gay guy comes out, and he's like the gay guy in charge, okay? And he's like, hello, party people, hello. Tonight, baby, we're gonna party till 3 a.m., baby. It was 7.20, Jack. It was 7.20. My man's calling three, I don't think so, okay? Tonight, baby, we're all going to Wonderland, just like Alice. Everyone on your table, you had three pills, baby. One will make you smile, one will make you taller. And one is a little Gordy Locks pill. 
Because just like Diego, it makes everything all right. <laughs> so let's take these pills, okay, baby? On three, everybody. One, two, three. Oh. <laughs> My wife's like, should we take these pills? Fuck yes. <laughs> these are gay drugs. You damn right we're taking these. These are the best drugs they make. Nobody was seated to my left. I grabbed them pills, did them too. <laughs> Fuck it, right? Where I'm from, you're gonna dance with the devil, you might as well lead. You know what I'm saying? Let's do this. I'll tell you, man. Whatever it was, it worked. It worked phenomenal. 20 minutes later, I was sitting there wondering that if the nucleus of an atom was as big as a car, that nucleus could be in Los Angeles, yet the electron that orbits it would be in New York. That's how much distance is in an atom. Comparable. <laughs> but yet, we just learned in physics that that electron, which should be a static negative charge, because it's always orbiting, keeping in a constant positive, neutral. Makes sense in a stable element, right? But no. Physicists have found that that electron dips throughout dimensions, in and out. So it could pop up in New York or Mexico City or Hawaii. It's amazing. It's amazing that that might be the thread that holds us to this dimension, is those electrons. That's what I thought was going on in my head. Turns out, I was just tweaking my nipple, holding my junk, <laughs> dancing to Kesha in the corner. Good times. We went to 340. Diego was right. It was a hell of a party. It was a hell of a party. So glad I went. Don't be homophobic. No need. You know? I know that, but it's kind of nice to be an ambassador for my accent, because every gay man thinks that everybody talks like me, hates them. Couldn't be far from the truth. You know? They were... Uh, it was impressive, you know? I'm glad I could be there for that. Because I used to be dumb, you know, back when I was a child of the night. I, uh, I used to think the worst thing in the world would be have a gay man hit on me. You know what's way worse than that? Having 300 gay men on ecstasy not hit on you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That sets it up right there. Thanks, guys. Y'all been fun. I'm Ralphie Mack. Good night. Bye-bye, y'all.